Sometimes, when it's awfully quiet, I find myself wandering around in my own head and suddenly out of nowhere it'll hit me. Well, it's more of a flooding sensation than being hit because it's sudden and at the same time it fills me completely almost as if I were empty before. This sensation makes me think of an excerpt from Genesis that says, In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. This feeling happens to me when I'm seeking inspiration for choreography or the movements that make up a dance. When I'm filled with this sensation or inspiration, there is very little I can say that expresses it correctly. What I mean by this is that in finding this inspiration seemingly out of nowhere, it connects me with God. This divine inspiration, this flooding feeling amongst chaos shows me that something I believe to be beautiful can be created out of nothing often after my initial inspiration. Then I begin to look and listen for a direction to take my piece in. Whether I want it to have a storyline or characters, what the music should be like, if the music has words, or it's completely instrumental, what I want the costumes to be, if I want my dancers all dressed in black, or if I want them in beautiful colors. The next step is like a simple prayer, and I mean more than just, please God, don't let me screw this up. <laughs> a prayer. In which I listen for a new direction that I have not yet explored. A prayer in which I seek reassurance and the confidence to be vulnerable in front of an audience. This kind of vulnerability is vital in being an artist because you realize that not everyone is going to interpret or appreciate your work like you do. So in essence, creating a dance and having it performed either by yourself or a group of strangers or friends is like taking a leap of faith. <laughs> And trust me, I have taken many of those leaps. The first time I ever did a solo in front of people, I was completely terrified and would have much rather been hiding under a rock rather than to be performing my own choreography by myself. But then a funny thing happened. During the first seconds of being out on stage, my fear went away and my body took over, which was a miracle all in itself. This single moment showed me that I created something beautiful in this chaos, anxiety, and fear. Not only that, but I can now see when I create a dance, I'm not only creating it for an audience, but there is a, always a little prayer somewhere inside, whatever I might be working on, and that I'm creating something beautiful hand in hand with God. But going back to this whole concept of letting go of the fear and doing it anyway, I can honestly say that this not only applies to dance, but in my passion for human rights and equality, and it's something I have learned here at College Park and in the youth group. So now every time I get ready to take that leap of faith, whether it's going out on stage in front of a bunch of people or standing up for what I think is right, I have a loud voice inside my head telling me not to be afraid and that I am never alone. And finally, at the end of this whole process, I somehow end up on stage bowing or watching from the wings. There is a sigh of relief, a sigh of relief that even with the chaos and confusion, something I believe beautiful happened. Or at least, you know, that's what I think. I don't know. <laughs> because what the audience takes away from that is out of my control. And although my life and rehearsals, classes, and even my free time can be rather chaotic, and trust me, there is nothing more chaotic than cramming a bunch of teenage girls into a dressing room, I try to remember that I am not alone and something beautiful can come out.